pay their dangos to you. Today's video is about stripping all the bearings out from this Johnson 30 horsepower lower unit and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. We've still got the bottom oil seal in here and a bearing under there that was quite rusty and now it's rusty and painted. So both of those are gonna to have to come out. I'm gonna have a go at using this spigot bearing puller to try and get them out to avoid any real damage to this edge, which is already quite chipped and quite fragile. The legs move in and out. So I'm gonna set the legs to the width I need to sit on the gearbox. I then need to rotate the nut here so that the puller can drop down low enough so that the hooks go under the oil seal. Then as we wind this top nut down, this little cone here pushes the legs outwards to grip the oil seal. And then we have to lift the whole thing up, see if we can pull it out. So this is the nut now. As we wind this one, it pulls this whole assembly up, hopefully bringing the oil seal with it. So it was coming out, but I've reached the limit of travel. So I might have to put some blocks under these little legs to get it up higher. There's our oil seal out. You can see in there now we've got a bearing for the drive shaft, which is in terrible condition, so we're going to pull that out too. Just going to tighten these legs up to reduce the flopping around. Now, it looks like the smallest diameter that I can get these hooks to is just a bit too big to fit through this bearing, but I think it's close. I'm actually going to try and just hammer it through. Given the bearings going in the bin, I can't see any harm in giving that a try. There we go. Okay, cone down, brings the jaws out. We'll see if we can get this bearing out. Feels like a pop then, so it shouldn't be too hard. Looks like this might want to be one of those rare times where a ratchet spanner is reasonably useful. Okay, there we go. One very dodgy drive shaft bearing. This is the replacement bearing that I got from MarineEngine.com, and. You can see here the bearing itself is inside a housing. What I'll do now is press the bearing out from the little carrier and we'll put the new one in. All right, we don't need the bed for the press so low, so we'll lift this up a bit. Now we'll just put these two metal blocks together. We need the blocks far enough apart so that they clear the bearing itself, but close enough together so the housing can rest on them. Looks like with this bearing, a 16 millimeter socket's the right size. I'm just putting a little bit of solid bar on top of the socket so I don't have to move the ram too far. There we go. You can see this housing's quite clean on this side. And it almost looks like a sort of rubber seal here. I'm presuming it's just gunk. So I'm gonna quickly put this on the wire wheel to see what it really is. Yeah, so it's just a bare metal housing. When we go and do the reassembly videos, we're just gonna press the fresh bearing into this and reinstall the whole thing. Next thing we're going to remove is the bearing race for the forward gear. I'll show you that. So there it is at the back, a bit of surface rust on it, so it definitely needs to get replaced. What I was planning to use to try and get this out is a slide hammer with an attachment like that. This attachment's too thick to get behind it, so I'm gonna put it on the wire wheel, see if I can grind it a bit thinner. Obviously you need the strength still, but these are replaceable tips, so I'm not so worried. I'm willing to give it a shot. If it doesn't work, we'll try something else. I've gone for a bit of a wedge shape, so we'll see if that fits under. That's fitting now, so I think we're in luck. It's 
not a great edge, but we'll see how we go. Hmm, that wasn't hard. I love it when things are that easy. It gives the illusion I know what I'm doing. So you can hopefully see there this bearing race is quite rusty. There was water in the gearbox and obviously it's been open for a month. It's not great. I shouldn't have taken so long to get back to this from losing parts, memories fading about how things came apart. You're always much better off just doing these jobs quickly if you can. All right, next we're gonna look at the lower two drive shaft bearings. Hopefully you can see down the bottom there are two more bearings. Now the service manual gives a list of about five different custom tools that you assemble to get those out. As far as I can tell though, the procedure is to essentially push them down into the gear case and then pull them out. I'm just gonna grab a socket, the same size as the bearings, put an extension on and see if I can hammer them both through. Looks like a 19 millimeter socket should do the trick. There we go, two more pretty manky looking bearings. As well as being a bit rusty, I think they've actually got some of the blasting powder from when the paint was stripped off. So we'll definitely need to replace those as well. The real trick's going to be getting the new ones into their correct position. So if you've ever done that job before, comment with your tips. We're getting close to having everything out now. I think the last thing I need to remove now is the bushing for the shift linkage. This is the shift linkage here and this is the bushing. There's an O-ring that goes on the inside, one on the outside, and we need to pull this out of the block. Once again, as far as the service manual is concerned, blah, 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 custom tools. I'm just gonna put a bit of threaded rod down through the bushing. This is the threaded rod I bought to pull the bearing carrier out, which is quarter inch, I think, from memory, and it fits through here just. So all I'm gonna do is put this through, reach in, put a nut on the end, and use the slide hammer to pull it out. The shift linkage bushing is just in here. So I'm going to put this threaded rod down into that bushing. Now the threaded rods come right through, I'll put a couple of nuts on the end and then we'll pull it up. It's a little bit tricky to get the nut on the end. What I'm going to do is just use two fingers to hold the nut in position and see if I can rotate the rod to get it started. The other thing that's important is that whatever you put on the end of the threaded rod is not bigger than the outer diameter of the bushing, otherwise it won't be able to pull through. I don't have any particularly clever way of attaching the slide hammer to that thread rope, but what I do have is a pair of vice grips that have an attachment to go onto the slide hammer, so I'm just going to use that. Because the slide hammer itself is a bit heavy, I'm just going to get the right distance on the jaws first. All right, I think that'll do it. Turns out that although the nut I've got in the end here is smaller than the bushing itself, so that's kind of what I was going by, I think I could pull it through, but the hole that the shift rod finally comes through is smaller than that. So I'm gonna put this nut onto the grinder and make it smaller. So this was the original nut, like this, and I've now ground it down to be like that on the wheel. So this now I've checked does fit through the hole. Oops. All right, I'm going to try a different tact. What I've done is just drilled a small hole in a bit of plate steel. I'm going to put that on, put the threaded rod down, and then just try cranking the nut down to use it as a puller. So we're rigged up now, some washers, the nut, the plate. Inside here you can't see, but I've got the rod pulled up as far as I can go with the nut hard against the bushing. So we'll just keep cranking this nut down and see if we can pull it up. Still feeling pretty tight. I'm hoping it's stuck from corrosion and not that that nut on the end's catching on an edge somewhere. What did that do? Yeah, I think it came up a little bit then. I think we're in luck. So I'll just keep cranking this nut until we got it all the way out. So, there we go. There's a bit of a nylon piece that goes on the bottom that's pulled in. Maybe that was for making it hard, but it's out. This old bushing, it's actually an O-ring housing, is probably still serviceable. You could probably put just new O-rings in, reinstall it. It'd probably be fine. So after that experience, I'd probably recommend going this way. The trouble with the slide hammer, I think, is that there's just a little bit of play in everything. You've got the, you know, the lower unit in the stand. The stand wobbles a bit. There's a bit of cushioning from that nylon washer. 
So I'd probably go straight to this technique next time. That's everything out from the lower unit now. What we need to get out now is two oil seals and a bearing at the front of the bearing carrier and a bearing at the back here. To get them out, I'm gonna drive them with just a hammer and a punch from this side. The little spigot bearing puller I've got doesn't reach deep enough in to grab it. It'll probably grab this side actually, so I might give it a go here, but it won't reach the far side or the propeller side. Once again, I'm just gonna put the little blocks under so I can get the extra distance I need to pull it right out. So there we go, one bearing. This is the bearing closest to the dog clutch. I'll try using a socket to drive the other one out from this side through. Because the bearings are the same, I'm gonna use this bearing to find the right size socket. Looks like a 17 millimeter socket's gonna do the trick. I'm going to use a couple of timber offcuts from the boat strongback, just so that the bearing can come through. Oh, and in case you're wondering, it's perfectly acceptable to hammer on extensions and sockets and things as long as they're yours. All right, two oil seals and a bearing. So it looks like these four bearings are the same, the two from the bottom of the drive shaft and the two from the prop shaft bearing carrier. So I'll order four of these and we'll put new ones in. All right, well that's it for today. We've got everything stripped now. So I'm gonna give this a really good clean because I can see a little bit of residue still from when it was sandblasted. So we'll make sure all of that's gone. And then next time we look at this gearbox, we'll start putting back together. All right, well thanks for watching and I'll catch you then. See ya. Thank you.